Luke chapter 15, verse 11. Then he said, a certain man had two sons. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in the land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and journeyed, joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he spent, sent him into the fields to feed swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son, but make me like one of your hired servants. And when he arose and came to his father, and he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him. Someone say a great way off. <laughs> his father saw him and com had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. And I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to the servant, bring out the best robe. <laughs> And put it on him and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet and bring a fattened calf here and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. And they began to be merry. Somebody say the joy of the Lord. I tell you something will cause joy to break loose when the backsliders get right with God. When the prodigals come home. <laughs> Somebody say God's a God of restoration. Now, we all know this story so very well, and we know what it transpired, and the son got his thing and went and squatted and lived riotous living and then ended up in, 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 a, in a pit, and he was ended up longing, feeding the swine, longing to eat the food that the pigs eat, and he came to himself. And I'm telling you, I got a little prophetic word for you here this morning. The Holy Spirit spoke to me, and he said, there is a mass, a mass of young people in this country that have, were raised in church, that have become prodigals, and they're out there living up riotous lives, and they're out there hanging out with the pigs. Some of them don't even realize it yet. He said they were raised in church. They had encounters with me, but you, they are so far gone from me. But God said, I'm about to do a work. I'm about to stir up a holy dissatisfaction on the inside of them. They're about to realize that all the partying and all the hanging out and all the worldliness isn't satisfying. And they're going to begin to long for even just a little bit of what they used to feel in the household of faith huh they, they, they were thinking everything's fine but all of a sudden God's going to pull away the, the veil of darkness and they're going to realize they're wallowing in a pig pen they're going to wake up and say man what am I doing in here what am I doing in here I'm going to go back I'm not even worthy to go back and see that's the lie of the devil He'll t he's telling them you're not worthy look how much you messed up you're not worthy to go back but I've got a message for the prodigals God is sitting there he's standing on the hill he's looking out every single day he's waiting for you to make one movement he's waiting for you just to turn just a little bit and then when he sees you he's not waiting for you to come all the way back he's going to run down to you Because every time we fall into sin, every time we fall into bondage, every time we backslide, there is a God of compassion and love that is longing and waiting for just one turn of our heart to say, oh, Lord, I want to come back. And he will run to us. And I'm telling you, get ready. They're going to come into the church all pierced up. They're going to come in all tatted up. They're going to come in all drugged up. They're going to come in all messed up. They're going to come in with unwed babies. They're going to come with all kinds of junk. But they're just saying, is there, is there some way I can even step back into the household of my father? Yeah. Woo! 
And God is not sitting back with an attitude saying, well, now you got to crawl back because look what all you did. He's not going to remind them of all of their past. He's not going to make them feel ashamed and beat down. He's going to sit there and run to them. And when they say, I'm not worthy, he's not even going to respond. He's not even going to react to their comment. He's going to turn and say, I want you first to bring the best robe. Why? Because the Bible says love covers a multitude of sins. I'm going to cover you with my robe. I'm going to put on you a robe of royalty. I'm going to cover your dirt. I'm going to cover your shame. I'm going to cover. No one's going to know the difference. And I'm not just going to cover your sin. I'm going to place upon you a more powerful robe. I'm going to clothe you with the robe of righteousness. I'm not only going to cover your sin, but I'm going to so clothe you with a new nature. I'm going to take away the heart of stone, and I'm going to give you a heart of flesh. And I'm going to put my spear within you, and I'm going to put my fear within you so that you're never going to run away again. Get ready, get ready, get ready. They're coming, they're coming. I tell you by the multitudes in this nation, they're coming, they're coming. That Kokada Mashende, we thought we lost this generation, but God is about to raise up an army of young people that are going to go forth in their schools in their fears of influence preaching the gospel with a demonstration of signs and wonders following get ready they're coming And they're going to walk under the banner of righteousness and holiness. They're not going to be playing one foot in the world and one foot in the church. They're not going to be trying to be just a cleaned up version of the world. But they're going to be ones that love the presence of God. They're going to shed off the things of the world. They're going to take on the very nature and image of God. They're going to walk in the highway of holiness, the Bible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hollywood's going to hate them because they're not going to get their money anymore. The music industry is going to despise them because they're not going to be investing in their wickedness anymore. The college campuses are not going to know what to do with them because they're not going to bow their knee to the liberalism anymore. They're going to stand up for righteousness and holiness and godliness. And you're going to see sudden, rapid changes and transformations. You're going to see a switch. They're going to one day be living like the devil. And I mean, it's going to happen suddenly, suddenly, suddenly. I don't want to do that anymore. I don't want to drink no more, cuss no more, sleep around no more, do those drugs no more. I don't want to be a dog. I am going after God. Not only is God going to clothe them, he said, bring the best robe, cover them with this robe, put on them a new nature, the robe of righteousness. But then he said, bring me the ring. Now, you got to understand about the ring. The ring is the family seal. The ring was the ring that you could use and you could go into the marketplace and you could put it down and you could buy things with the ring. It's the authority. I said, it's the authority. It's the authority, but we've been given a ring because that ring carried the family name. Well, we've been given a family name. It's the name that is above every name. It's the name of Jesus. That's why the world hates it. They don't mind if you say God. When you start saying Jesus, things start squirming a little bit. Huh? Hallelujah. You can say God all day long because they can apply that to anything. But when you say Jesus, there's no, there's no question who you're talking about. You're talking about the true one living son of God that raised from the dead, that conquered death, hell, and the grave. And no name has been given among men by which men might be saved. Come on, you want to see a reaction? Just say Jesus. Hallelujah. I, 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 I travel all over the world. I wear these big old t-shirts. Say, Jesus is my final answer. I'd be sitting there on the plane. People walking on. And I'd hear them. they walk by and they'd go, bleh, bleh, bleh. <laughs> Hey. So not only is he going to clothe them in righteousness and cover their shame and cover their sin. But he is immediately. Someone say immediately. immediately. Say it again. Say Immediately. Restore their authority. 
You know why? Because they're going to need the authority of the name of Jesus to stand up against the wiles of the enemy. See, the devil's told you when you fell, and there's people in this building. He told you when you fell. He, he told you when you messed up that you got to crawl your way back. You got to crawl your way back. No, you don't. You know why? Because only if you get all the way back, you get righteous and you get authority. Do you have the power to resist the enemy? So God's not going to leave you out there in a weakened condition. Hello, come on. Come on, y'all know what I'm talking about. When you're in a season of revival and you're feeling all fired up, you feel like you're living right, you know, right? And then, boy, you just pray for big stuff. Oh, God, save my city. Oh, God, give me a new house. Oh, God, deliver Uncle Phil in the prison and fill him with the Holy Ghost. Right? And then you mess up. Then you feel a little backslid a little bit. Then you feel a little weary. And all of a sudden, your prayers change. Oh, God. Be nice if you move in the church. Oh, God, just put a little clothes on my back and a little food in my stomach. And Oh, God, poor, poor Uncle Phil. <laughs> Come on, am I telling you the truth? Come on, when you're feeling particularly full of the Holy Ghost and fire, you're willing to pray for big stuff. Because you feel like I am in a rightful position to pray it. But God is saying, I'm just looking for the turn. Come on, I'm just looking for the turn. I, I'm just, oh my Lord Jesus. I, I'm just looking for the turn. And if you turn back to me, I'll clothe you. I'll cover you. And I'll restore you. And I'll give you the full authority back. Somebody's got to help me out here a little bit. I'm telling you, there's a spirit, and that's what's flowing right now. I feel it in my spirit. That's why over these next couple weeks in these meetings, I encourage you, you grab every backslider. You grab every wishy-washy Christian. You back every compromising Christian. You, back, you grab everyone that says they know God but don't live like they know God. You say, you're coming to church with me. Don't you be aware, well, Brother Steve, this is a little crazy for them. That's what they need. They've been stuck in normal. It ain't working for them. They need to get around a little bit of crazy. Woo. Am I talking to anybody here? We got to shout me down a little bit. Hey! Woo. All I need is a Hammond B3 and I'll be happy. And then, in the process of restoration, then he got sandals. Sandals speak of your walk. Then he put on sandals and said, now it's time to get up and start walking. Come on, get up and start walking. Get up and start walking. Brother Steve, you don't understand how bad I fell. I, I only got one free word, word for you. Get up. Get off the mat. Stop lying and wallowing in your self-pity. Get up. I, we're not justifying and we're not sweeping it under the rug. Repent of it and get. Somebody say, get up. Yeah. Say it again. Say, get up. Yeah. You ain't going to win on the floor. Get up. Yeah. Turn to your neighbor and say, get up. Yeah. Oh, you can do a little better than that. Come on with some authority. Get up. And I'm telling you, there's a prophetic word. Some of you just need to go speak out on the streets. God is going to lead you to people, and you say it's time for you to get up. Time for you to get back right with God. Time for you to run hard after him. Time for you to leave the pig pen of life and come after get up. Ooh, come on, it's time for some of your family to get up. Am I talking to anybody here? Stop writing it off and stop telling everybody. Stop telling yourself it's they're too hard and they're too religious and they're too stuck. Nobody's too hard. Nobody's too religious. And nobody's too stuck for an invasion of the Holy Spirit of the living God. It only takes one touch and it changes everything. Mm. And then he said, Get the fattened calf, because we're going to have a party. There's going to be some joy in the house. 
Now, I want to make sure that you're like the father and you're like the servants. That when the backslider and the one who, who abused the things of God for so many years, when they get right, that you're on the celebratory side and not on the brother's side. Y'all remember the brother, right? He had an issue. He is all upset. Why? He went to his father and said, why, why? I'm going to paraphrase. Why are you letting him have a party? And a fattened calf. And I've been here all along. And I've been faithful. And I've been serving. So you got to be careful because that's what the devil tries to do. He tries to stir you up. Get you mad because they were living so worldly and so ungodly. And then they get right and God starts using them and gives to the spirit. And you're saying, well, Lord, I, just, you know, I don't know if I agree with that. Because, you know, they... come on, amen. Why are you using them? I've been here all along. You haven't been using me. You know, what the, you know what the father said to him? He said, son, everything I have is yours. Just because, man, I'm going to paraphrase, just because you've been stu- too stupid to use it. You never asked. But it is right that I celebrate because my son was dead and now he's alive. I'm telling you, a lot of the people that God will use in the greatest ways are the youngest Christians. You know why? Because they just go radically hard after God, and they believe God for everything. I I remember when I first got saved, I I I just radically went hard after God. I believe God for everything. I mean, I read. I, I got so excited. I read the New Testament three times through in the first 12 weeks I was saved. I listened to over 60 hours of Holy Ghost preaching tapes. I got fired up. I got to Mark chapter 16 and said, these signs shall follow them that believe. And I went, ooh, ooh, I believe. So I'm going to speak with new tongues. I already do. (laughs) I'm going to cast out devils. Come on. I'm going to lay my hands on the sick and they are going to get better. I'm going to move in the gifts of the Spirit. So I remember I was only saved four weeks, and I went into a Sears because I, I was listening to all these preaching tapes, and I burnt out my tape deck already. So I went in to buy me a tape deck boom box, and I'm looking at it for, in there for like an hour trying to figure out which one I, I want. And there was this young man, and he was kind of hanging around, milling around, checking out for a long time. And the Lord spoke to me and said, tell him about me. I said, here? I'm only saying four weeks. I said, in Sears? We ain't in church. He said, tell me, tell him what I've done for you. I said, all right. So I went up there and I told him my whole testimony. It's only four weeks long, but it was big. <laughs> it went for an hour. I was a preacher even back then. And, and I shared my testimony. And then I said, do you want to give your life to Jesus? And he said, no. I said, do you want to go to church? No. And I was sitting there. I felt like Moses, you know, when he put down the rod and turned into a snake. And then and, and, and the magicians did. And my faith was violated. And I was like, and I said, inside, I was saying, God, you told me to talk to him. Then he doesn't even want to go to church. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, ask him about his mother who divorced his father, who remarried a man who now beats him. Now, I didn't know how to do it. Pentecostal like I, f- I feel a word from the Lord yeah you can't really I the Lord thy God saith unto them no no I didn't know how to do it that way I, I just turned to me and said your mother divorced your father and married a man who now beats you his face went white he said how did you know I said God told me He said, I said, do you, want, do you want to give your life to Jesus? He said, uh-huh. <laughs> but I didn't know he could get saved in Sears. So I said, you got to get in my car. I got to take you to church. <laughs> so he hopped in my car. <laughs> we went over to the church. I went into church. It was the middle of the afternoon. All the preachers were playing golf. I couldn't find a single preacher. I'm like, what am I going to do? So I got him into a room. I sat him down. I said, I'm going to lead you in a prayer. I don't know what I'm doing, and I don't pray very good. Because I'd only ever prayed one public prayer, and it was messy. 
It was one of these. I was praying for my mother. Um, God. Um, my mom. Um, Lord. Um, Jesus. Um, uh, sweats flying everywhere. Um, uh, uh, amen. So I, I, so I turned him and I said, I led him through the sinner's prayer when I could remember. I give my life to Jesus. I, you know, whatever. I put my hands on him. I did what they did to me. I bind you, devil, in the name of Jesus. I, I don't know if there was, but just in case. <laughs> And I said, Jesus, fill him right now. And all of a sudden, he starts shaking in the power of God. And I'm shaking. And he's like, oh, you know, and I'm shaking. And then uh, he goes on for a couple minutes, and he opens his eyes. He turns to me and says, what do you mean you don't know how to pray? I said, I never prayed like that before. I started going out leading people to Jesus left and right. Started seeing incredible miracles taking place. All kinds of miracles, casting out devils, all kinds of things. Why? I just was going hard after God. But there were a few brothers in the church. And they would say, well, it's good to see you on fire. I knew somebody that was that way for almost six whole months. And I told him, I said, I'm going to be more on fire in 25 years than I am today. Yeah. Someone say, God, God. is a restorer, a restorer. Of, all of all things. Now, they're going to come in all kinds of ways. They're going to come in all kinds of methods. They're going to come in with all kinds of junk. We're going to love them. We're going to lead them step by step. We're going to disciple them step by step. We're going to give God a little bit of time to work on them. We're not going to try to fix them overnight. C come on, somebody. Amen. It took them a lot of years to get that messed up. It might take a little bit time to get them cleaned up. Come, come on, somebody. Amen. We had a mighty move of God hit a church I was associate pastor in, in in Conyers, Georgia. Power of God hit, started getting, I was associate pastor, youth pastor, and we started getting all these young people saved. Right out of the, the I mean, it was the projects of, of trailer parks. I mean, it was, it was, it was, it was, when they, in the dictionary, it said trailer park trash, it had a picture of this place. It was bad. I mean, drugs and alcohol, most of, almost every family was bound up. It was so bound up. We started sending a bus in there. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm praying for a bus for the church. Come on, amen. At least some of those big passenger vans, you know. But we, we, we sent a bus in there. We loaded up the bus with a bunch of, I mean, these kids were not, they weren't just not church. They were a mess. I mean, rowdy. I mean, one kid, he jumped off the bus, snuck around, went up to one of the cars. While we're doing worship, opened up the gas tank and got high on the fumes. He walks in, the 11-year-old kid walks in stoned out of his brain. Two weeks later, he got radically saved, cast devils out of him. Now he was walking around drunk in the Holy Ghost. Man, we had a move of God. He had so powerful. I mean, people, young people's lives were shaking. We literally had to carry them home. So under the power of God, it was a hoot. But I had a few of the board of demons. I mean, deacons. We have deacons here. Some churches have board of demons. And as one guy walked up and said, Do you know I saw one of those kids out there in the parking lot smoking a cigarette? I said, well, yeah, I'm sure. He got saved like three days ago. He ain't got the Holy Ghost. I said, give him some time. He just got saved. He said, and then I saw them putting their feet on the pews. They were desecrating the house of God. So you know what I did? You know what I did? I, the next service I was preaching, I stood up and I said, Hey, this ain't the house of God. This is the house of God. You should have seen him.
Come on. We got to admit. <laughs> Lord. But the, the pastor, he was a precious, dear man of God. He turned to me in tears one day, and he said, Steve, he said, if these guys would just get out of our way, we might actually reach this city. Don't you let yourself be one of the ones that is chasing them away. Well, they, they, they ain't got fixed up fast enough. They ain't got cleaned up fast enough. Why don't you stop trying to be the Holy Spirit and just love on them and just keep showing them the grace and the mercy and the love of God and let God do his work. Because they're going to come in and we better be ready. They're going to come in smelly sometimes and we better be ready. They might come in homeless and we better be ready. They might come in with 14 unwed children. We got to be ready to do something to reach the love of God and to help them get out of the mess. We got to be like the father that says we're going to cover your sin. We're not going to go around and say, oh, did you see Did you see who joined? The, came into the church? Yeah, but I heard they had this problem and that problem. You ain't covering the sin. The Bible says he who ha hatred stirs up strife. But love covers over a multitude of sin. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. We're just going to cover you. And we're going to lie. We know you are messed up. Everybody knows you're messed up. We can smell the mess up. But that's okay. We're going to cover you. We're going to put some Holy Ghost perfume on you. We're going to clothe you up. And we're going to hold you. And we're going to carry you. And we're going to walk with you. And every time you stumble, we're going to help you get back up. Because we know you're going to get to the place where you're full of the Holy Ghost and power. Where you become a danger to the enemy. We're not going to leave you in the pig pen, but we're not going to kill you. In fact, what you ought to see is when, the, when God begins to kill the fattened calf for the one that just got back, you need to sit there and rejoice and celebrate and let it stir you up and say, oh, man, I, could, I should be having some calf too. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I tell you, I feel it. I feel it. I get ready for some massive, massive, massive restoration. Oh, my Lord Jesus. I said massive restor. I said massive. Re I said massive. Oh, karama, massive, mass. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Woo! Someone say massive restoration. <sighs> Pastor Benjamin, if you come, if you got a moment, that's all right. Woo! My God, rabba, ba, ma, ma, shande. Shakara. Do you know what the Bible says? In the book of Daniel, it says some of those who are strong will stumble. That's what the Bible says about the end times. Some of those who are strong, some of those who are strong, some of those you even looked up to will stumble. But God says this is that they might be refined. Come on, amen. My God, I feel his presence. See, we, we're in America. We'll forgive once, but we have a hard time forgiving twice. We were okay. We're forgiving Jimmy Swagger the first time, but we had a hard time on the second time. Boy, it's quiet now. Come on, amen. God was using him. He was leading more people to Jesus every single month than anybody in the world. Over a million souls a month. Yeah, he had a serious moral failure, serious sin. He needed to get delivered and get free from that. But why is it that we've just written him off for the rest of his life? Why? Come on, somebody, amen. Where is the restoration? You say, well, 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 well Brother Steve, oh, but that preacher got divorced. I, I hate divorce. But where is the restoration? Now, you understand, I'm not justifying sin, and we need to fight against those things. But there is a God of total restoration that if we're in the pig pen, if we'll turn, if we'll just start coming back, he will run to us. 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 Lift your hands. Oh, God, thank you. I don't know about y'all. He ran to me. <laughs> Come on, he ran to me, he ran to me, he ran to me, he ran to me, he ran to me. Come on, just begin to pray, pray in the Holy Spirit.